Well, good morning, everyone. Great to be back to worship together. It's funny how a week can change things. Uh, we were planning on a big thing on the 26th, and um, of course, Dr. Strang changed that and with the Premier's uh, approval, and so we're going to have to wait till October the 4th. Hopefully, things open up then, but one step at a time. I should say, uh, just hearing from some um, uh, pastor friends up in New Brunswick and from our, our head office, but... New Brunswick has gotten themselves in this place where they will, um, they want to see the churches prove that they have 90% vaccination rate. So how do you do that? How does that work out? So just really thankful for um, uh, the leadership we have here in Nova Scotia. They basically deemed us an essential service, which makes things 10 times simpler than it could be. So um, continue to pray for our, our leadership uh, and Dr. Strang. I just, when I found out the news from that, I was pretty thankful that we're where we're at right now. So, um, yeah, we continue to adjust. We'll take it one week at a time, one day at a time, and we can be here today and worship the Lord and have the, you all look so good with masks on and, and uh, keep the plexiglass up for a bit. But um, great to have the worship team back and uh, good to see some folks you haven't seen for a little bit as we, as we worship the Lord. So let's start off with a prayer, shall we? Uh, God, we come here today I just pray that we'd quiet our hearts, that we would listen to you. Lord, as we come here, as we sit down, as we hear the words, we sing the songs, we'll be hearing the message, Lord, what would you say to each one of us? What's the message you have for each one of us? It might be different for each one, but Lord, my prayer is that your spirit would descend upon us in a powerful way today, to soften our hearts. Lord, I pray that if we've come in here with baggage and anxieties and concerns and things that are weighing us down, I pray that as we worship you, those things would fade away, knowing that we are in your hands. In Jesus' name we come. Amen. Well, let's stand together and worship, shall we? Good morning. I will declare my joy to the nations. I will shout for joy the congregation. I will worship God, worship God all my days. Those who love the Lord are satisfied. Those who trust in Him are justified. I will serve my God, serve my God. All my days Cause when the nations crumble The word of the Lord will stand Kings will rise and fall His love will endure Though the strong may stumble The word of the Lord is friend Cause to my soul, I will not be shaken, no, I will not be moved, I will not be shaken. I will declare my joys to the nation, I will shout for joy to congregation, I will worship God. Worship God all my days. Those who love the Lord are satisfied. Those who trust in Him are justified. I will serve my God. Serve my God all my days. Cause when the nations crumble, the word of the Lord stand, and kings may rise and fall, His love will endure, and though the strong may stumble, the joy of the Lord will spread, cause to my soul, I will not be shaken, I will not be moved, I will not 
I will not be shaken. I will not be shaken. Let's trust in the Lord. Let's trust in so praise the Lord, you servants of the Lord. You who fear his name, lift him up, both the small and the great. Praise the Lord, ye servants of the Lord. And you who fear his name, lift him up, both the small and the great. And hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Yes. Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Yeah, hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. And hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty Praise the Lord, ye servants of the Lord. You who fear his name will lift him up, both the small and the great. And praise the Lord, ye servants of the Lord. You who fear his name lift him up. Both the small and the great. Now, hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. And hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. And hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Yes, you reign, Lord. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart. And let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And daily I will lift my hands. I will always sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever, oh Lord. I could sing of your love forever. Oh, I feel like dancing. It's foolishness, I know. But when the world has seen your light, they will dance with the joy like we're dancing now. I could sing of your love. Sing of your love forever. I could sing 
of your love forever yes lord i could say of your love forever lord yes we could sing of his love pastor Rob. i may be seated I want to read from the book of Revelation this morning uh, to the church in Laodicea. Connects us a little bit to the message that we're going to be hearing. Uh, if you're interested, it's Revelation 3, verses 14 to 22. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, this is Jesus talking to John, who's on the island of Patmos. and he says, these are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you're lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I'm about to, uh, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You say I'm rich, I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, so you can become rich, and white clothes to wear, so you can cover your shameful nakedness, and salve to put on your eyes, so you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. Did you hear that? <laughs> That's hard sometimes, but those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline because of his good love for us. He says, so be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. A few years back, I remember just after Melissa and I got married, we had our first apartment together, which had next to nothing in it, but it was our first apartment together. And I think she was out working one night at the, uh, I think you were working cash at the superstore, something like that. Um, but I was reading through this passage of scripture and I thought to myself, uh, Lord Jesus, I'd like to dine with you. Uh, you know, you're knocking on the door. I want to open it and I want you to sit down and I want to I dine with you. I don't know what that means exactly or what that will look like. Um, I can tell you this though, after so many, I think that was about 20 years ago now, um, yeah, well, 20, yeah, because I've been married. To, I know how long I've been married. <laughs> I do remember that. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, four different provinces, sitting down and eating, eating in so many different homes, with so many different people. Uh, it's amazing um, who God is and how deep His love and grace is in our lives. And I go back to this passage every now and again. I think I. We just got to keep opening that door. It's easy after time goes on. Perhaps you start to shut it. You grow cynical. You get, you know, events happen in your life. So we're going to take a time of prayer, and I pray that you would hear what the Spirit uh, might be saying to you, and know that as you open the door, Jesus wants to sit down and dine with you. Uh, he's not somebody who wants your money. He's not somebody who's going to hurt you. But he just wants to have a closer relationship with you. Let's pray. Lord, we come today. You do. You stand at the door and knock. And perhaps for some of us, um, our faith has gotten a bit flat. Happens all the time. Lord, we pray that you would rekindle our faith. Um, that in our hearts you would dry the wood, you would prepare it, and that that, that match would take and the fire would start. Lord, I pray that during our worship time this morning, 
Holy Spirit, as you are working in each heart, as you are doing only what you can do, that you would speak to us specifically to individual people in ways that only you can. Lord, use the worship team. Use me. Use this, the scriptures we just read. I pray that, Lord, as we've come in to worship you today, that we would be filled up knowing that we've met with God. Lord, I pray that if anyone in here feels really, really far from you, I pray they would know that you are very near to them. Lord, if our heart's gotten cold, if our heart's gotten hard, if it's gotten stubborn and stiff-necked, I pray, Lord, that you would soften it. Lord, help us to see beyond the type of instruments that's being used. Help us to see beyond the individual who's preaching and all of his flaws, help us to see beyond the things in our lives that are causing us frustration. I pray that we would be able to enter into worship with you in a way that we have not, perhaps in years. Lord, we open the door this morning. Pray that your spirit would have your way with us and that we would listen and respond to the message. In Jesus' name we come. Amen. Amen, Pastor. This song is very appropriate for what Pastor Rob just spoke about. Sometimes we can get at that plateau and we don't feel we're going any further. For God, we seem to just die out and... I kind of likened it to playing the guitar is sometimes you can get in at an instrument and you'll get to a certain plateau and you don't seem like you can get beyond that you seem to stay there but with the Holy Spirit's help he'll take us through Lord my heart can grow so far away and cold and yet for me your love is still the same and Lord I've been my knee in awe and fear of thee my head bowed down in reverence to your name You're the great I am 
my comforter and king. Yes, I lift your name, your holy name, Lord, Jehovah God, Elohim. My comforter and king, you're my comforter and my king. Yes, you are, Jesus. And I will come and bow down at your feet, Lord Jesus. In your presence will this fullness of joy. There is nothing, there is no one who compares to you. I take pleasure in worshiping you, Lord. I will come and bow down at your feet, Lord Jesus. In your presence there is fullness of joy. There is nothing, there is no one who compares, Lord, to you. I take pleasure in worshiping you, Lord. Yes, I take pleasure in worshiping you. you, Jesus. Pastor Rob. Make sure I take my water, not yours. Eh? <laughs> I'm safe. I, haven't drank yet. I think I just got a floaty there. I don't know what the... <laughs> yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> well, you know, we've all had that time when you go to... Uh, do something and your phone starts to ring and uh, you're not really sure if you want to pick it up or not. <laughs> There's always those people who enjoy picking up the phone all the time. They're the type of personalities. They, they just do that type of life situation. But for most of us, uh, we're thinking, is it a cold call? Should I pick it up? Five minutes ago, somebody just rang. I don't know if I want to answer this phone call or not. And, um, you know, maybe I'll just ignore it. This past week, uh, well, two weeks ago, I found a book in our little tiny bookshelf back there in the hallway, written by uh, Charles Stanley. And it's called Blessings and Brokenness. It's a, a great little book. But deep inside that book, as I was making my way through it, I found this little section called The Three Calls of God on Every Person's Life. The Three Calls of God on, on Everyone. It doesn't matter who you are where you're from or what's going on, they all apply to everyone on the planet in some way, shape, or form. Three areas in your life where you definitely want to pick up the phone and listen to what God is trying to tell you and to tell me. And so like Jesus standing at the door and he's knocking, um, everyone on the planet needs to answer these three phone calls and respond. All three of them, so I got three things I'll tap into, they all connect together in some way, shape, or form. Uh, I find it helpful the way that they're laid out. If you want to poke at them a bit, you might say, well, the theology could be tweaked a little, a little bit. But regardless, I found them very practical to appreciate what God is up to in, his, in your life and underscoring why Jesus came. 
So I want to hear these three calls this morning. And my prayer is that if one of them tugs on your heart, that you would listen. And that's so important. It's easy to forget why we're here. Why we're here and what we're doing. I know it's church and we've gotten up and maybe we haven't been here in a while or we've made our way in and, and uh, we set aside this time. It's a worship service. It's a worship service. It's not about us. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about the one we came to worship. And so when all the components that are put together, we're worshiping the God of creation, the God of heaven and earth, the God who's trying to speak to you. Uh, Proverbs will talk about how he's crying out. Wisdom is crying out in the streets to speak. And we need not be afraid of him or scared of what he might convict us of. That's a lost word in our culture, the word conviction. You're convicted of something, that you were doing something and going down one path, but you should go down another. But God always had, has our good in mind, has our welfare in mind, our redemption in mind. Right? God's a God of love, so he, he, um, he gives us what we need. He offers us undeserved grace. He overflows with mercy. He desires your deliverance. He actually wants to, wants to help you. So the voice of truth on the other end of the phone wants to set you free. Most people you talk to today, they want something from you. But he wants to heal you in soul, spirit, and body. He's God who's like a potter and he wants to take you, the clay, who's broken and turned into something beautiful. But for that to happen, we have to surrender to his hands and whatever he's doing in our lives. He is designed for you and I to mold us into something great. And so in worship, we enter his presence. We listen to his voice. We sit under the ministry of the word during the message as God uses a sinner like myself to try and communicate something that God is trying to say to you. So I would plead with you to listen to what he's saying beyond me standing up here. But if in some way God were to actually phone you this morning, what is he saying to you? Three calls on everyone, including you. The first call is God's call to salvation. God's call to salvation. Here's the famous verse. You used to see it at the football games. There's always this crazy guy in the background at a, when they do a field goal, and he's got a John 3.16 up. Um, I haven't seen him in a while. Maybe he retired. I don't know. But um, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Because God loves you, he wants to save you. Can you remember when you place your trust in Jesus as your Savior? If you can't, that's something you need to do. That's a phone call you need to pick up and listen to. Because with God's great gift of love for everyone on the planet comes the responsibility on each one, including you, to ask in order to be given to you, to seek in order for you to find and to knock so that the door will be open to you. We are responsible if we have sought God out or not. It's a very sobering thought, by the way. We tend to think it's God's responsibility to always get our attention. Well, mom or dad didn't tell me to do this, so I'm not responsible for it. No, not quite. <laughs> right? People love to play the blame game. The blame game. Some people will go on years in their life and never take ownership and responsibility for their choices and actions that they have done. God can be seen in all that's been created, and so it's our responsibility to seek after him. Creation speaks of his existence. No one can deny it. The Holy Spirit is poured out and at work in all the earth. I pray that you would hear God's call to salvation. Think of Windsor and West Hants, the area that we love so much. This whole town and county has God calling each and every one. Perhaps some have listened and rejected. Perhaps some have avoided the call. Perhaps some have gone in other direction, but perhaps that's you. And you just find yourself here this morning. God has a message for you to be saved. 
to come to Christ in faith. We can go even deeper with that because God actually wants to use this church to tell other people about Jesus. Use even you. And that truth will knock you off your feet because are we on with the mission that we have been tasked with or are we wasting our times in other ways? Do we look like the mission work done in the book of Acts or have we become something different? And if we have, we should make a change. We're not here because we have a building. We're not here because we put on a service. We're here to reach out to other people that they might come to know Jesus Christ and be saved. To be a part of that phone call for them. God's call to salvation is all about your acceptance of what Christ has done for you. It is to accept by faith Jesus Christ shed blood at Calvary as the all-sufficient substitutionary atoning death that brings about forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life through the power of his resurrection. And so by answering God's call through placing your trust in Jesus, you're being saved from the punishment of your sins and separation from God forever. Just because your parents did it, just because your brothers or sisters did it, just because, you know, maybe even your kids have done it, you have to do it yourself. You have to come to faith in Jesus yourself. You want to know more about that, I'd love to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Easy to find me online or the phone, the phone number here at the church. If you can do anything in your life, answer that call to salvation. The second call is God's call to sanctification. God's call to sanctification. It sounds like a big word, but I don't want to water this down. It comes out of the New Testament. I think we need to hear it. This phone call isn't easy, um, but one we all need to answer. So when God saves, he also sanctifies. Part and parcel of the whole thing. God saves to redeem and renew. To be born again through faith is regeneration. That's a new birth. And sanctification is growth that comes from it. Growth. So God's second call for everyone on the planet is not only that they're saved, but that they grow in their salvation. They go through a process called sanctification. And this is the hard part. This is where a lot of Christians will hang up the phone. You know, if you go to a doctor and have surgery... The physiotherapy after the initial surgery is just as important for you to heal and grow. If you don't do it, the surgery might not have its full positive effect. No one usually likes the physiotherapist. <laughs> they get you to move around and do stuff that hurts. Uh, hear these words from Paul to the Thessalonians. That's a church in, back then, Thessalonica. So God's not trying to hurt us. He's trying to help us as we figure out who we are. A journey that takes time. But here's the passage. And it's intense. But hear, hear him and then hear me out. It is God's will that you should be sanctified. First part. It is God's will that you should be sanctified. That you should avoid sexual immorality. That each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable not in passionate lusts like the pagans who do not know God. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God, the very God who gives you his Holy Spirit. Two big things from that intense verse is that it's God's will for you to be sanctified. And that's not coming from Paul. That's actually coming from God. So this is a serious phone call. I don't know if you've ever had that thought. I wonder what God wants me to do. I wonder what God wants me to do with my life. I wonder what God's will is for me. And I remember uh, <clears throat> earlier on as I came to faith and was considering my call in ministry, finding that verse and reading the first opening line and saying, this is God's will for you. And I thought, whew, <laughs> what's it going to be? And, I, and you just read the, the, the rest of it, you think, okay, he wants to clean me up. I, I don't know if I want that. <laughs> he wants to sanctify. That's a weird word. So let's step back. The whole point of sanctification is not that you just get to heaven. 
The whole point of salvation, your salvation, is that you become more of who God designed you to be in Christ, living like heaven on earth. That you actually become that. So you just don't trust in Jesus, you actually start to live like Jesus, and people can see Jesus and how you live and what you do. And that takes time and hard work on your part. And that's why the word sanctify literally means to separate from, to clean, to purify. You start to stand out amongst your friends because you're more devoted to God than them. And so Jesus just isn't a secret thing in your life. They see him literally glowing from you. Again, this is where a lot of Christians will hang up the phone. Don't answer to begin with or try to change what God actually said because you didn't quite quite like it. I'm guilty of doing all three. And this might be why some of you might feel connected with God at times or, or disconnected, even disillusioned in your faith, maybe even apathetic about it. Lots of people start off really good with Jesus. But it's the last, you know, mile or two of the run that they start to really fall away. And maybe that's been you the last few years. It's a wrestle. It's, it's a, an internal spiritual fight, and it's hard to keep going. So I turned 42 in August, and sometimes I think, you know, you're thinking, boy, he's young. Sometimes I think, man, he's, he's older than Moses. I, my kids think I am, but um, you do. You reach these points. You think, I don't, I don't know if I can keep doing this. Like, I'm tired. Even the monotony of it, you know. Um, and it really does become a question of devotion. Reading a book this past week that said, do the right thing even though you don't always feel like it at the time. It's an old word that describes Christians. It comes out of the Bible, but it's the word perseverance. You, just, you, just, you keep going. And some days are different. Some weeks, some months are different than others. Sometimes it's just, it's a good thing during the day if you brush your teeth. You know? And uh, for some people who struggle with mental illness and depression, that's a big deal that they did get up and brush their teeth. I still remember um, uh, Gail Leary, a beautiful saint. Remember uh, Stella? Remember Gail? It was a big thing that she, she struggled with, with depression, severe to just show up to church was huge for Gail. Every time I saw her, I thought, well, if you can do that, then I can, I can stand here. And of course, depends on your age. We, you know, we get talking like this, your life situation in terms of the things you're dealing with. Depends on your inclination. Some people will wrestle with some things that other people won't. I mean, this isn't an instantaneous process. It takes a lot of time. We start getting into something like this where God's trying to clean us up. We start talking about things like conviction and confession and forgiveness. This brings us into areas of mental health and anxiety and depression even. It's hard stuff. It's not e easy. And really, it was never meant to be because of how broken we are. This is something I've aired on and I'm learning recently. I'm guilty of not appreciating that enough. We're so broken that it takes more time than I want it to for myself or others to just kind of get on with it. The fact that I would use the words get on with it <laughs> shows something, something's off. I mean, if you, if you cut your arm, just the other day, my, uh, my cat, whom I love, three of the seven days of the week, <laughs> uh, she, uh, she bit me and cut my arm. And uh, I started to chase her, and the kids were like, Dad, calm down. <laughs> you know, it, it, uh, <laughs> it, it healed. It's healed now, though, three days. But if you fall off your roof because you're trying to fix some shingles and you break your back, that's going to take a lot longer than three days. We are incredibly broken as sinners. 
It's easy to think God says don't do that, so, so don't do it. That person should stop doing it. I should, I should just automatically stop doing it. It's not that simple for sinners who are as broken as we are. It isn't. If I say, because God says, hey, don't gossip. You know? Tell that to somebody who's an extrovert who can't stop talking for the life of them. They're just two legs with lips on top. They just they can't stop. Right? And you will learn that it, it takes years for that person to mature and actually stop gossiping. And even then, it's probably a couple times a week. Our patience and long-suffering, both for ourselves and those we are walking with, need to be calibrated in relation to the struggles we have and the person we are with. You're more broken than you think. So, so there's, two, there's two extremes. We don't want to abandon the faith and the historic teachings of Christ on moral and ethical issues, that's becoming a big thing. They got it all wrong. No, they didn't. Because they're too hard. And neither should we abandon the person who's struggling with said issue or issues, because they aren't changing fast enough, even though they're trying. It's balancing a tension between grace and truth, and you find it all through the New Testament. The truth is that sin is sin, and you've, you've got to keep calling it that and keep learning what that is and what God doesn't want us to do. Your relationship with God and others is not healthy because of it, but grace is also that I will walk with this person. I will even be able to forgive myself because God says, you're forgiven. You are no longer condemned in Christ Jesus. Because God's aim is not to hurt us. His desire is to help you, to heal you, and for us to walk alongside them and do the same. We are so broken. Right? We are so broken that we, we are not only in denial of our brokenness, but we will try to fight against the one who's actually trying to heal us. Like trying to help and love a child who needs you and who is lost, but doesn't even think they are. Like you're telling them what they need, but they're just hanging up and ignoring you, thinking he's a stupid dad, he doesn't even know what he's talking about. <clears throat> and adults do this with God all the time. All the time. God's call is for you to be saved and to be sanctified. And we need to pick up the phone and hear what he's trying to tell us. And the last call is God's call to serve. To serve. Is it up there, Anna? All three of them connect. So when you get saved, you begin the long process of being sanctified. All to lead you to greater service in God's kingdom. God's call to service is for everyone, including you. And we're all fundamentally created to serve God. The idea isn't so much to come to church, but to be the church. Meaning to serve each other in our broken world for his kingdom. And the cool part is that God's call to service is always highly personal. It's different for each one. There might be some similarities. And it's very specific in terms of your gifts and abilities that you have that other people don't. And it's also calibrated to your willingness to serve him. Your willingness. I have, I, I, what I'm trying to say there is, I've had times where I, when I look back, I could have actually gone deeper and further with God, but I was a little too scared to go that far with him. Jesus says, follow me, deny yourself, pick up your cross daily. And we all have that cross we are to pick up. It's your choice whether you do or not. Maybe your call is to be a full-time mom in a world that makes fun of that. I know a few. Maybe your call is to start a new business. I don't know. Impact your community in some way. 
could be in smaller ways, right? We're all different, different life situations. Maybe your call is to help out in the church in some specific way. We all have a cross to pick up. I got thinking about this. I mean, Jerry, how many times have you retired from leading worship? Yeah, a few times, a few times. He thought he was done. He's still up here. Because I think somebody one Sunday said, it's time to get off the fence. And you're like, okay, Rob. But he heard God's call to service, and he's helping out in the ways that he can. And we thank him for it, don't we? The whole team up here. Even helping out once a month in something. If that's where you're at, that's your conviction, that's your cross to carry. I don't know. It, you, you can go to bigger picture stuff. Everything from adopting a child to participating in a mission organization. I don't know. Like the two other calls from God, it's meant for your good. The Apostle says this, We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Will you do those things that he has prepared in advance for you to do? The question is, are you willing? Am I? It will, it will always involve sacrifice. It will always involve a level of dedication. It will also bring joy and blessing you won't find anywhere else. I mean, if you're a Christian, what's your ministry? Like, what's your, your thing? What's your thing for Jesus? And if you don't have one, maybe that's why you feel a little bit connected, because that's part of what he's designed you to do. God wants to use you, not just the person who rose up from you. It's easy to come and be at meetings and expect the same person to do the same thing year in and year out, but they need your help. Maybe it's time for you to step up and share that committee, you know, um, serve in that way. I'm a big believer that God's call to you, and you in particular, is specific and direct. I believe God does speak clearly. It can take some time to discern what that call is, but I'm a big believer that his sheep hear his voice and they follow him. Eventually it becomes crystal clear. And if you're trying to figure that out, maybe I can help. I know what it's like to be in the mud with that. God is calling you to salvation, sanctification, and service. There are hard phone calls to pick up but worth doing. The peace, contentment, joy, and fulfillment that comes from answering those calls are hard to put into words as somebody who's answered them. However God talked to you today, I pray that you would listen, obey, and know that he loves you, and it's for your good. Let's pray. Uh, Lord, I know, I know that you love each person in this room. I know that you have plans for each person in this room. You know the future, not only of, of each of us here, but of the whole world, and future events that are going to happen that we don't know. Lord, you have mi new ministries you want to start. You have ways that you're working in our lives and the privacy of our own homes and rooms and bedrooms in ways that our neighbor will never understand. And so, Lord, I surrender all of us to you. We surrender ourselves to you. Lord, the way that you have spoken to us this morning, I pray that we would listen, find comfort in knowing that we have met with Almighty God, that we would trust in you, and serve you to the end of our days. Lord, if anyone in here this morning doesn't know you, I pray they would place their trust in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Lord, call your children home. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll stand together and sing the closing song. Tis so sweet 
to trust in Jesus and to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise and to know the Savior Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I proved him more and more Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust him more Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust His cleansing blood, and in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing's cleansing flood. And Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh for grace to trust Him more. Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus. To simply talk in rest and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust. So glad I learned to trust the precious Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that Thou art with me, will be with me to the end. And Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I. Yes, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Amen to that. Can't beat that old hymn, can you? It's one of my favorites. So, because things moved October 4th, everything stays as has been here in the church. Continue to sign up for Sundays with the Mass and so on. Uh, we were planning on a on a homecoming on the 26th with a meal and everything after the service. Obviously, that's been postponed to a later date. Uh, but we are going to be having and going on with um, a Sunday children's ministry during church uh, with a nursery opening up for the 26th. So we, we just need to get that moving along. Uh, you'll see up there, looking at this week in particular, uh, tomorrow is a great Canadian Bible study. I, I want to say the Great Canadian Baking Show, but that's <laughs> that's not the same thing. Uh, <laughs> I know, darn. <laughs> it looks so good, some of the stuff they cook. Uh, that's tomorrow night. The wives of David are going to be there. No, uh, I gotta, <laughs> it's in <laughs> Yeah, it's incredible, really. Uh, uh, that, that's the topic that Melissa's going Melissa's to be speaking on that. And, and they are taking up an offering for a, a missions organization to help uh, orphans and widows. And, um, and then a youth group is starting up Wednesday evening at 6.30 uh, for an hour and 15 minutes. So we'll be having a, a game, snacks, devotion. Uh, we're going to be making our way through the case for Christ. And it should be kind of interesting exploring the claims of Jesus and I don't know if that's true. I don't know if I believe that or not. So I think it'll spur on some, some good conversation uh, Wednesday night at uh, 6.30. So that was, oh, um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say for today. That's enough. So should I say another thing?
The group? Oh, the group? Yes, yes, okay. We've got another woman's group starting up in two weeks or three weeks. Uh, and going to go through the book, Help, I'm Drowning. So if I feel like that's you, we're going to uh, help, I'm Drowning. That uh, Sunday's at 4 o'clock. And, and we'll be sending out an update on that as we move along uh, through the weeks. Okay, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for today, uh, for your work in our lives. We can just meet here and worship you. I want to say a special thank you for our premier and Dr. Strang. Uh, again, when I heard of what's required for some of our churches in New Brunswick, I thought, I just thank you that we are an essential service down here, and it just makes things more simpler. So we do want to pray for our uh, brothers and sisters north of the border and all across Atlantic Canada. Lord, I thank you that we have met with you today, and I pray that as we leave, we would leave knowing that you're with us and that you want to do something great in our lives. Thank you so much for all that you are and all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Have a great week. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how 